Well, welcome to this short tutorial which is going to look at the point replicate procedural shader that's been available in Houdini since Houdini 12. And what it's used for is taking a set of points that you've created here in an, in an interactive uh, session of Houdini and then at render time Mantra takes each of those points and instances many other points on them. And that allows you to take a relatively manageable number of points, such as those we've got here, and increase them enormously to thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of points. And this can be quite useful sometimes in some effects. So what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is set up an object which is going to be used as our procedural output. Every time you use a procedural shader, you need to have an object which is going to be rendered, which will at render time be converted into the output of that procedural shader. That may sound a bit complicated, it'll become clearer as we go through. So I'm just going to lay down a box. We can use anything we like for this dummy object. So let me call this dummy object. And the box isn't going to be rendered. And the reason the box isn't going to be rendered is because down here on the geometry tab, we're going to set up a procedural shader. And instead of rendering the box, Mantra is going to run that procedural shader and then use the output of that procedural shader. So the next thing we need to do is to create that procedural shader, which is going to convert these points here into the points that are going to be used instance further points. And that shader we need to lay down in the shop context. And if I hit the tab key here, there's a collection of shaders here under the procedural menu. You can't see this on the video, but one of them is point replicate procedural. And this has a number of parameters. There's a point object, that's the object that we're going to use as the basis for our point replication. So in this case, we're going to use this collection of points that we've got here. The attributes to copy just says which attributes from the original points will be copied across to the new points. For example, you might have a color attribute that you want to copy across. The point multiplier is the number of points that you're going to create for each point in the incoming geometry. So in this case, let me uh, put a number of 10 in there. So 10 points for each, each incoming point. And the CVEX operator will come to in a moment. So for the moment, that's sorted. So we need to go back to our object context and take our dummy object that we laid down. And we need to apply the procedural shader. So let me apply it. And at the moment, what's going to happen is that both of the both the original points and this, this new set of points are going to get rendered. And there are a couple of ways that we can control this. One of them is just to take the original points and turn off the renderable flag. And that means that uh, they won't actually be rendered in the final render. So if I turn off the dummy object as well, you can see that when we, when we render, we don't get anything. Uh, now, if I turn back on the dummy object, what we should see are a set of points. And at the moment, we're, we're just getting four points. And the reason for that is that we haven't properly initiated our procedural shader. So let's go back to the shop context. And we can see that we've left the point object blank, which is the object that it's going to draw the points from. And that's the original points object is the thing that we want to draw on. So when I do that, we can see that we're getting essentially those original points. So we can see that this object is not being rendered. What's happening is that the procedural shader is taking those points. And for each point, it's instancing 10 other points. But the problem we've got is that each of those points is exactly the same position as the original point. And that's why it looks as if we've just got the original set of points left. So the next thing we need to do is to vary the position of those points. So for, to do this, we need to use this CVEX operator and we need to create a CVEX shader. And to do that, uh, what we're going to do is create a CVEX shader builder. And once we've laid that down, we can dive inside. And with the CVEX shader, shader builder, you don't get any inputs or outputs for free. You have to do everything yourself. And just a reminder what CVEX is. 
CVEX essentially takes a set of attributes, for example, on some points, manipulates them, and then provides some outputs which are then relevant to whichever context or procedural shader you're using. And how do we know what's relevant in this case? Well, if we go to our point replicate procedural, which is the thing that we're going to use to build this CVEX operator or to apply this CVEX operator, and we click help, and I fear that's going to take a moment to come up. Let's have a look. There we are. We can see that in the help card, down the bottom, there is uh, a reference to this CVEX operator. And it talks about three relevant attributes that we can use. One of them is a P attribute, which is the position of the multiplied point. And you can write to that, which allows you to move the point. The ID, which is the integer of the original point, that's the point in the original geometry. Each point will have a different ID number. And then the PID, which is the count of how many, which, which number point it is that we're replicating. So in this case, we've got 10 points. So for each, uh, this CVEX shader, we run once for each of these new points. And each time this PID number will be different from naught to nine. So let's go back into our CVEX shader. And let's lay down a parameter. The way we access those attributes is using parameters. So let's call this one P in, and we're going to access the value of P. And we'll call it P. And this is going to be a vector. And I need this to be invisible because we don't want to show up it to show up in the original in, in, the, in the interface rather. The next thing we need to lay down is another parameter, and this time it's going to be ID. So again, ID, ID, and this is going to be an integer value. And again, we want this to be invisible. And then the final one we want is going to be called PID. I just made a mistake there. And again, we want it to be invisible. So these are the three attributes we get to play with. And normally what we might want to do is to use these to add some noise to each point so that each point created by the shader is in a different place. So uh, let's lay down a noise attribute. And I'm, I'm just going to use a turbulent noise. We can use any kind of noise we want. And what are the inputs here? Well, the type of noise we're going to want is 3D noise because we're going to add this to the position. And the position is going to be this P value, like so. And then the ID value and the PID value, we're going to want to affect the noise so that each individual point is going to be in a different place, or the noise is going to work differently for each individual point. So let's do that by using a multiply by constant to start with, because we're going to need this ID number. If we just add these together, then we're going to get an overlap. We, we need to multiply the ID by, say, 100. And then we're going to add the PID. So that means that every single instance point is going to have a different number once we've added these things, two things together. And the other thing we might want to do is offset this by time. We might want the, 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 the noise to vary over time. Now that uh, can't be done using just the parameters available here because time is not available. So we're going to need to have an external parameter for that. So I'm going to have uh, another parameter node. And this time it is going to be, and I'm going to call this offset. 
and I'm going to make it a three float value. And that's going to allow us to add in a time offset if we want and to vary the, the noise. So we can then add, let's, we need to convert this first of all into a vector, like so. And then we're going to add these two together. So this vector and this vector. And we're going to plug the result into the offset of the noise. And the other attributes of the noise, like the frequency, the amplitude, the roughness, the attenuation, and the turbulence, we can have as parameters to our to our shader allows them to allows us to alter them. And then uh, we can take the output of the noise and we can lay down an add node and we can add it that there and we can add it back to the original position. Like so. And then in order to, for the CVEX shader to work, we're going to need to write this all back out to the position. So we can lay down a parameter. In fact, what I can do is over here, take this parameter, and I can change this to export when an input is connected. And then I can just control C, control V this. And by the way, it's very important for this shader to make sure that you have a vector here. If you use three floats vector, this isn't going to work. So it has to be a vector type. So let's move this over here. And let's call this P out. And we can put the sum in here. And what this should do is for every point, compute a unique value of noise and add that to the original position and then put that back into the position value, export it back. So let's call this, uh, let's call this P out. Like so. Well, let's see whether that's worked. So what we need to do is now, let's call this something a little bit more understandable. Let's call this point noise. And then let's refer to it here in our CVEX. So point noise. Now, there's a problem here. Uh, this is giving us an error. Read only expression on the left side of assignment. Now you can't see this here. This is giving an error. And uh, when I looked at this earlier, there seems to be a little bit of a bug in CVEX at the moment. Uh, and the problem is, let's, we can have a look at the VEX code here by right-clicking on this. And we can see, if we look towards the end of the shader here, this statement, P equals noise plus P, appears to be causing the problem. And so we need to try and work out a way of that not causing a problem. And what I did is use a trick to rename our P attribute. So if we go up here, we can lay down a null and we can put the P into one side of the null, like so, and we can put the other side of the null into the two inputs here. And that's adding the wrong thing there now. Let's just do that. There we are. And the null can be used to rename a parameter. So I can call this p temp, for example. And now when I view the VEX code, uh, what we should see, there we go, is that we're using p temp here. And that may help us to change that error. So let's collapse that, go back up. Let's clear this and let's try re-rendering. There we are. Now it's not uh, currently producing any variation, so let's examine why that is. Well, the problem appeared to be there that uh, this, this just hadn't recompiled. 
So I've, I did a force recompile and just reconnected a few of the nodes in here and it is now working. So I just disconnected and reconnected this node. So there's obviously a, a small bug in this version of Houdini. In any case, as we can now see, each of these points has a different uh, a different uh, number of points. The noise is, is different in each case. And uh, we can increase the amplitude of the noise and that uh, disperses the points even further, like so. And uh, the other thing I'll just demonstrate by doing a, a render of, say, the first 50 frames, is that uh, the, the noise can vary by time. Sorry, that uh, needs to be... So to vary the noise by time, uh, at the moment if I, if I render any frame, uh, the uh, the distribution of points is going to be exactly the same. Uh, I can use this offset parameter and I can just add in $t and we should see now that uh, the two are different. So let me just render the first 10 frames say of this. So render frame 1 to 10 and what we should find is that uh, these uh, change at each frame and we can see that in a second. I'll just uh, run this through at the end when it's finished rendering and that would allow us to see that the distribution of points is indeed changing at each frame. So let's uh, try that and we can see that that's changing quite a bit at each frame, like so. So that's an introduction to the Point Replicate procedural shader in Houdini. Thanks very much for watching.